Hey everyone, welcome to another NLP video. Today we're looking at the paper Pay Attention to MLPs by Authors from Google Research. This paper focuses on the transformer architecture and in particular it investigates the question to what extent the attention mechanism, which is a quite an important component of the transformer architecture, so to what extent the attention mechanism is important for the success of this architecture or not. To investigate this, they come up with a new, simpler architecture, which conceptually is related to the transformer architecture. It also consists of a series of stack layers quite, quite similar. But instead of having a self-attention sub-layer in this layer or this block, they are replacing it with a simple feedforward transformation of the representations. So a much simpler um, module. Trying to investigate if they can build such a architecture without any self-attention that achieves similar performance as the standard transformer architecture. And indeed, that's what they do precisely. The architecture that they propose, which is called the uh, GMLP, gated MLP, multilayer perceptron, I think, is able to achieve comparable performance to the transformer on vision tasks and also comparable or sometimes, depending on the task, a little bit worse on natural language processing. So today we're going to look into that paper in a little bit of more detail. So let's get into it. As you all know, transformers have been very popular for various tasks in NLP, such as translation, natural language inference. Uh, we have the BERT architecture, which has been a very useful approach, very, very, very a great advancement in terms of pre-training, which can then be easily fine-tuned with small number of data points on a wide range of downstream tasks with a great success. Recently, the transformer has also, has also been applied to computer vision, with success, achieving performance comparable to large covenant architectures sometimes. And yeah, one crucial component of the transformer architecture, of course, is the self-attention or multi-head attention mechanism, which basically consists of, uh, performs a comparison. Here I have uh, a picture. You can think of it in simple terms if we look at one of those charts from the original transformer paper. Basically, what the attention is doing, given that you have your input sentence, it is in this sprint, blah, 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 making the registration or voting process more difficult, some sort of a political sentence. The self-attention is applying a series of comparisons on the token level or on the subword level. So uh, you are comparing, for example, each word, let's say making, to each other word in the sentence. Up here you have the same sentence, so making to making, making to the, making to uh, regist registration, and so on and so forth. Uh, and by applying this, people have been using this for different interpretations, but it seems that the architecture, the model, is able to learn to do meaningful operations, detecting relations between different words, for example, an entity and a verb, or uh, information that has been shown to be uh, useful to come up with a meaningful uh, result, meaningful output of the model. And so the self-attention is used in all transformer-related models, such as uh, standard architecture, BERT, Roberta, and various variants. A huge amount of models rely on self-attention. And the goal of the paper today is to investigate whether you can replace that with a much simpler model module. Here you have a standard block from the transformer architecture. You have your input embeddings or inputs, if this is a, another, like a second, third layer and so on and so forth. You apply some normalization and you apply a projection, which is again a linear transformation. You have an activation function. And normally you have here your self-attention module, your multi-head self-attention, which uh, applies to to each um, to move is basically chops off each em word embedding or each subword embedding and uh, then applies this comparisons 
basically you you transform each kind of segment of your subword embeddings you take always uh, segments of those embeddings transform them and then you apply to this you apply you do these comparisons um, uh, you compute some weights basically it's like a weighted sum over your embeddings you concatenate all outputs from all heads of this attention you transform them again and you have your output and this is applied multiple times over several layers you keep on uh, applying this operation and in the current paper instead what they do is they come up with a new block which they call the gmlp which is doing something much simpler you are first of all you're gonna well basically it's like a, a single layer transformation you are uh, basically taking your input input here and the result is uh, the multiplication of Two components one is the input directly so you have some sort of a, a skip connection or something like this and the other one you apply some normalization and then you do linear transformation and you add this and you this is the output and this simple unit they call a gated mlp they have tried obviously a few different uh, architectural variants to come up with this one which at the end of the day it's working quite good and this this kind of block you apply multiple times over uh, as many layers as you can afford in terms of memory um, and training time and they actually because this is a much simpler block than the self-attention they're able to have much larger much more deeper uh, models in comparison to standard transformer models so i think the biggest that they do is 32 layers which in terms of number of overall number of parameters is the same as a 24 layer uh, bird model from so it's the bird large model so you're able to have a much much deeper model but you're then sacrificing you don't have this self-attention um, at each layer you don't have these comparisons and the, basically the question that they're investigating is do you really need this self-attention which everyone is raging on about can you do something simpler and have a bigger depth and get away with achieving the same performance and indeed it seems to be the case so as i said they are applying this model on image classification of ImageNet um, comparing to a bunch of state-of-the-art baselines and it seems that the um, takeaway is that the GMLP you also have a few a few variants here um, that they have tried is able to achieve comparable performance in terms of ImageNet top one classification so um, these are some I'm not so familiar with those models but it seems that you're getting in the same ranges um, in terms of Oh yeah, and here you have another comparison in terms of number of parameters. In red we have the GMLP and you have some other baseline. And it seems that it's very, very close to all of those models, which is quite cool. Actually, which one is the vision transformer? I think maybe the, all of those are vision transformers. So in comparison to an architecture which has the self-attention, you uh, are able to get comparable performance without having this uh, self-attention, which is providing you this sort of sequence level uh, interpretation, like sequence level yeah, these comparisons. If we look at the results on NLP, they're trying out on a few tasks. One is mask language modeling and what they're comparing here is the standard BERT model with a transformer architecture. You also have your BERT model with some small changes in the put in the biases. Not so important to go into that part. And then you also have your um, GMLP models, a few different variants, different type of um, gatings and different uh, ways of doing this linear layers. What you find is for the same number of parameters, you have comparable performance or even better sometimes in terms of language modeling in terms of perplexity leading to suggest that the self-attention isn't doesn't seem to be very crucial for language modeling mass language modeling and you are able to get deeper layers here with the gmlp another interesting comparison on another task is natural language inference where what they show is actually the self-attention is more important for natural language inference let me find those results i don't i cannot find those but if you read the paper you can find that what they show is for natural language inference there is a small reduction in performance by using this gmlp over self-attention which 
make sense because natural language inference is a task where self-attention might be more beneficial. You need to do understanding and reasoning over the whole sequence to come up with your prediction. In comparison to mass language modeling, which might the network might be able to self-arrange in a way such that it is able to still learn because it's not so crucial maybe to have this yeah, these comparisons in comparison to the more sequence intensive task, which is natural language inference. But one of the interesting things that what they find is that if they adjust this GMOP architecture to include only a single self-attention layer somewhere in between the architecture, they're able to immediately match the performance of the standard BERT model on this task, leading to suggest that maybe you don't really need to have this self-attention at each layer, even, even for very intensive language tasks. But this is something to be investigated more perhaps in future work. So to sum up, this is an interesting um, work with a lot of experiments, a lot of architectural variants trying to explore simpler architectural alternatives to the standard transformer model. There's interesting results on both vision and NLP tasks, suggesting that self-attention might not be as important as people have previously believed or have sold and people have been spending a lot of time analyzing the self-attention and labeling it as some sort of a really, really important um, like really insight, insightful tool for understanding what the model is doing. But what we show here is that you don't really need to have it specifically to achieve the same raw, num raw results in terms of numbers, um, accuracies on various tasks. I would like to see maybe in the future some more analysis. I think there, there is already some analysis in this paper in terms of um, interpretation, but there's still a lot to do, perhaps. And I'll leave you at that. Um, thanks for listening and I'll talk to you in the next video. <laughs>